Here we have an AMD Red Devil Ultimate 6900 XT graphics card that came in for no power. We already disassembled the card right here. Big card. And we have three 12 volts inputs. Let's see what the customer wrote and what's going on with the card. Some spilled a cup of water on the 6900 XT. It shut the system off before it could be shut off. When I tried to boot, it flicks light, shut system off, and won't boot. All right. The customer mentioned something about liquid spill. So we have to do visual inspection on the board and see if there's anything obvious. And we'll take it from there. We're going to start with the inputs, 12 volts each, one, two, and three. And right now I'm just looking to see if we have a liquid spill anywhere on the board before we do anything else. And then we can start measuring for 12 volts, 5 volts, 1.8, PEGS, V-Core, VMAM. Check if we have a short anywhere on the board. I do not see anything alarming. And for the most part, the card is clean. It looks good to me. Let's flip the board. Yeah, I mean, I do not see any signs of corrosion, no signs of rust, no signs of problematic areas. The stains that you see on the board are normal. You see this on every card. I'm actually moving the microscope instead of moving the cord because of the thermal pads on front of the board friction between my bench, the mat on the bench, and the video card, so I do not want to mess up the thermal pads. So I'm moving my microscope like this. And I do not see anything wrong on back of the board. Let's inspect the 12 volt lines, the inputs. We have two coils here. We can inspect that either one. We do not have a short. And let's check this one here. Oh, whoa, we have a short. Nice. Nice, at least we know what the problem is. The problem is we have a short. Now a short on the 12 volt line could mean that we have a problem with our V-Core circuit. A DR MOS on our V-Core circuit or likely a GPU issue. One of the two. Without wasting any time, what we're going to do is inject voltage at the short right here, either at this point or that point. And then we're going to monitor those ICs here under the thermal camera and see if we see any heat, any signs of heat. That could be an indication of which one of those is faulty. We also have some on the left here, so we have to take that into consideration. And even if we find the faulty chip, I do not have that chip in stock. We're going to have to order it. But at least we'll know that we got rid of the problem if we did find where the short is coming from. TDA21472. TDA21472. Let's see if we can figure out where the short is coming from. Let's go over to our thermal camera and we're going to inject voltage at the coil where we measure it for a short and let's see if we can figure out where the short is coming from. I'm going to focus on those 
chips right here. Based on my experience working on shorts on the 12 volt inputs, it's usually the V core circuit. One, two, and three, inject voltage. Inject voltage. Right off the bat, I saw something that got hot on the bottom. Let's try this one more time. See it? Right at the bottom. Let go. Heat spot goes away. Yeah. Right there. Right there. And that's the third MOSFET from the bottom. Amazing. We got it. How long did it take? Quick. The heat was coming from one, two, and three. Right there. Let's go ahead and remove the chip and see if we'll get rid of the short. Very likely that's what's causing the short. I do not see many of the 6900 XTs. Almost always 3070s, 3080s, 3090s, 1080s, 1070s. Those are the common ones. We have a Titan that we're going to be working on next. Titan X. I'll probably do a separate video on that one. The board is multi-layered. I do not know how many layers, but it takes a lot of heat to remove that chip. Right now, even though we are applying 500 degrees Celsius on the chip, the board under the chip is absorbing the heat. And once the board reaches the melting temperature of unleaded solder, then we will be able to remove the chip, just like that. Now, usually all the pins on the top, they connect to each other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those, they connect to each other. You can tell, one big pad. Those, they connect to each other. One, two, three, four, five. So when we solder a new chip, you may see a bridge here, or you may see a bridge here, or you may see a bridge here, and people freak out. What's that bridge? Why is there bridging? That's why it didn't work, because of the bridges. The 10 pins on the top, even if we bridge all of them, it's okay. But right now, we're not going to replace the chip because we do not have that chip in stock. Now that we remove the chip, let's go ahead and measure to see if we still have a short. We're going to measure right here at the coil that measured for a short before. And do we have a short? Yes. No short. 0 0.35. The reading should go up to about 0 0.4 once the board cools down a bit. But we got rid of the short. We were able to pinpoint the exact issue, the exact IC out of all the components that we have on the board. And we remove the short by removing the faulty component. So all we have to do is order that chip, solder it on, test the card, invoice, and mail it back to the customer. I do not know how the card will behave right now if we are to test it without that chip. But we can try. It's safe to power the card on since we no longer have a short. And now all we have to do is turn on the power supply. And I do see lights on the video card. We do not hear six beeps, or we do. We do hear six beeps. Okay, so it's likely that we have to replace the chip. So we're gonna have to wait until we order the chip We'll solder it on the board and then test again. Hopefully we are able to save the card. And that's it. We're going to end the video right here. Short one. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video.